looked at uh, was the force on this wire. Uh, now, I made a mistake in the, um, in the last lesson, which was that the current element is, in fact... Yeah, now, where did I say it, though? Current element. Ah, current element here. Delta L multiplied by the current. Okay, delta Li is the current element, not just delta L. Delta L is the uh, the length of the wire that uh, is uh, belongs to that magnetic field or sits inside that magnetic field. Um, in order to find the current, what we call the current element, I need to multiply delta L by the current itself. Yes, Dylan. Yeah, mate. Yeah, it's all right. So we looked on. We looked at next this idea of uh, a nice uniform magnetic field and that's that's drawn here in green uh, this this magnetic field uniform uh, moving up the page and that's external to this wire this wire of course has its own magnetic field associated with it if it has a current moving through it and the current you can see by the right hand rule is moving to the right or up up the page there so so that the magnetic field looks something like this okay um, just be sure, the other class weren't sure, the magnetic field that I've drawn here, this external uniform magnetic field, has nothing to do with the wire, in fact. It's just some external magnetic field. This is the wire's magnetic field that I'm drawing in here now. Okay, looks something like that. Of course, we know uh, so far that um, uh, those two magnetic fields interact with each other. They either uh, repel or attract each other, whatever it may be. If we want to give it some quantitative value as to how they attract or repel each other, then we're interested in the current element that is inside the external field, which is uh, between this point here and this point here. I'll just remove the magnetic field due to the wire just to keep the diagram simple. Uh, and of course, this current element if, if this current element we looked at last lesson, if this current element was perpendicular to the to the field itself, so moving across this way, then we would have maximum force on that wire, or the current element inside the magnetic field. And if the if the wire was moving, uh, I'll draw it here, parallel to the field, then of course we know from the diagram earlier here that those two magnetic fields can coexist in space without affecting each other, and so. Uh, a wire parallel to the field will experience no force. So what we say then, between these two, between perpendicular and parallel to that magnetic field, we experience varying degrees of force. All right? I'll remove those and we'll just look at this here, this current element here. The component of that current element that is parallel to the field, of course, is... Does it feel any force? No, it feels no force. The experience is no force. That component there that is parallel to the field experiences no force. Um, so I'll, I'll draw an arrow to that so that you can see that that is the component there that is parallel to the field, that one. The component that is perpendicular to the field experiences uh, a force, okay? So that's uh, this guy here. Yeah, you could say it as horizontal. We tend to say, instead of saying horizontal, uh, we say it, that it's that's parallel or perpendicular to the field. Because the field, of course, could be uh, could be directed this way. We could have some field doing this, okay? And then you can't say horizontal and, and and vertical. It just doesn't work. So that's a good point. Uh, stop me if I say horizontal and, and vertical. I, I tend to make that mistake sometimes. So this component here is the one that we measure, that we use to measure that quantitative value of the force on, the, on this current element here. Uh, OK. Uh, then you can see that if this is theta, here in the corner here, uh, we want to find this component here, so opposite, and the hypotenuse of course is our current element, 
So sine of theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. So we have then the force, actually I'll do that in white. The force that that current element experiences is equal to the current element itself, I delta L, times the magnetic field times sine of theta. I have a problem for you. Any questions there? Firstly, I suppose. F equals I delta L B sine theta. Uh, let's get where are we here? Give us one problem. Don't look at the answer. Uh, I'll cut the picture out as well because the picture helps. Here's a current element sitting inside a magnetic field. I'll just make that a bit smaller. Leave this one that size, this picture. Wire carrying a current uh, equal to 6.8 amps. Placed in a uniform magnetic field, this, this B here, of strength B equals 0.4 Tesla at an angle of 140 degrees, as in the diagram. So 140 degrees, of course, uh, we're looking at we're looking at this angle here, there, between the magnetic field and the wire. Uh, find the magnitude and direction of the resultant force on a 0.5 meter. So that's the, the length, delta L, length of the wire in the field. Have a go at that, please. Find that it's, it's a very easy calculation. Um, I'll... I'll I like to do this a little bit differently. I did it differently to the book, I think. First of all, you have to decide where this current element is that is perpendicular to the field. And I'll say it's up here. So, uh, try and get that. Yes, good. So, that's the current element there. And, of course, I, I can give it direction that is that is perpendicular to the field, so I want to know what that is. Um, I, I'm going to do it this way. I'll say that uh, in the corner here, I might say that's my theta there, opposite over hypotenuse sine of theta. Theta, of course, is equal to 40 degrees there. Uh, 140 minus, yeah, 181 minus 140 is 40 degrees. So uh, the force is equal to the current element I delta L delta L B sine of theta current is 6.8 amps times 0 0.5 meters times 0 0.4 tesla times sine of 40 degrees we should get, somebody want to do that calculation for me, 0 0.874, 0 0.874 newtons. Of course, it is a force that is measured in newtons. We've used the SI units for uh, current. We've used the SI units for length. We've used the SI units for magnetic field and our angle. Uh, make sure your calculator isn't in radians. Um, and and so it says find the magnitude and, the, and direction of the resultant force on a okay so we found the magnitude the direction how do we find the direction right hand rule yes the direction of the force 
by the right hand rule, right hand palm rule, palm rule is now yeah, that's that's a right hand palm rule. So I'm going to put uh, at the moment I'm putting my thumb in the direction of the current element. My fingers in the direction of the magnetic field. Okay. And, and so I'll draw that here for the viewers at home. Uh, my, my thumb in the direction of the current element that is perpendicular to the field. My other fingers in the direction of the magnetic field. And then the force, of course, is out of the page. Or out of my palm. Make sure that you can do that. Make sure that you're capable of doing that calculation. It's out of the page, isn't it? Yes, good. I made a mistake the other day. I, I used the right-hand palm rule incorrectly. Any questions? You may have solved that a little bit differently. Moving coil loudspeakers. Uh, now, yes, we will fit this in. I'm going to take a picture from our book, from our textbook here. It is a good picture. And then I'm, I'm just going to, I'll just describe this picture at the moment. If you have a look on the table there, we have a, we have a, a, a a speaker, a moving coil loudspeaker. All speakers basically have exactly the same construction. If I were to slice that down the centre and open up a face, it would look something like this. There's the cone of the speaker. That's the part of the speaker that we're most experienced with. It's the one that we see, and we'd be looking at it from, from this way here. Behind that and at the base of the speaker, you can see the gold-coloured, the anodized uh, colour at the base there. That That... Is, is a permanent magnet. And you'll know that, um, and I'll show you in a second if I can find some metal that's magnetic. Oh, the side of the table will do. Um, they are permanent. This is a permanent magnet around here. And here, what we have is, if we slice it down the centre, we have a coil, which, ro which sort of goes around in the centre there, okay? Of course, what happens is I've got a permanent magnet and nothing happens if I don't pass a current through the coil. As soon as I pass a current through the coil, what do I do to that coil? What does it become? It becomes a magnet. We, we know them as solenoids, and it becomes a, 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 not a permanent magnet, but an electromagnet or a solenoid, and interacts with the magnetic field that is caused by this permanent magnet. That interaction can cause this cone to move, vibrate in and out if we have an AC current going through the through this coil, backwards, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, causing the magnetic field to uh, reverse polarity many times a second, uh, causing, and of course it's attached to the cone, so the cone moves in and out many times a second. I'll show you that operating in a second. Uh, is there anything else I want to say? Oh, so they call this the names of these things. Shall I make this picture a little bit smaller first? Uh, for some reason I can't pick this up. That's okay. We'll just I'll just leave it. Oh dear, something like that. Oh yeah. I yeah I've grouped. Hang on, what's going on here? We might be good. Yes, we're good. Okay, make it a bit smaller. Put it down here. Now, 
green's fine. If we we call that thing in there the voice coil. Um, this here is a permanent magnet. Uh, this is the cone. Under underneath here, there's a there's a bit of suspension called the spider, um, and the and the spider in profile would look something like a zigzag through there. It's just a piece of suspension for the cone to bounce up and down on. I'll just draw that. I know the diagram's getting messy. We call that the spider. What we're interested in mostly, though, and this is how all speakers are constructed on the face of our planet. There's a permanent magnet and a coil uh, wrapped around part of that magnet inside and, and, a, and a cone which creates the sound by vibrating backwards and forwards.